I'm assuming you mean my male rugby players. Because I, I suppose my generation, I'm going to be thinking of male rugby players. I don't know, public school? Probably white. Like, the first two words is usually like pom-poms. Girly. Blonde. Laddish. Gay. People's first reactions when I tell them I play rugby are very, generally very surprised. I think mostly because I'm quite small, I'm not a large person. A lot of men find it funny more than threatening. So I've been in queues for nightclubs before and had people be like, oh, go on then, tackle me. And I'm like, why? <laughs> Do you think I stand across a football field with a pair of pom-poms and cute chants? Which I have never done in my entire life. My name is Tony. I graduated from UCL back in 2016, uh, doing neuroscience, now doing a PhD at Imperial on, on cancer. And throughout my uni and most of my adult life, I started cheerleading. I'm what you call a base. So I'm the one that either lifts someone in the air or throws them in the air and is responsible for catching them. So depending on the level of cheer that you do, it's depending on the more complex things that you're allowed to throw or allowed to throw people into. So I competed at the highest level you can compete at, which is now called Level 7, uh, with the England squad last year and with the pro team I was on. And that is a lot of free inversion, so people are like flipping over your head as you're catching them um, onto your hands by yourself, so not un unsupported, or you can have a spot on the side. Three, five, I met a lot of my really close friends from cheerleading. I'm still coaching now. Like It's a sport that's not really understood and there's a lot of different levels across it. You can keep going up and up and up. Even at the top end, there's still people doing insane things. I'm Emma. I play for LSE women's rugby team. I've been playing for two years and I play second row, so that's in the scrum. I'm from Bath, which is a town that is like obsessed with rugby, so I grew up around it. And I played tag rugby when I was little, but I never thought that for some reason I'd absorb the idea that rugby wasn't something I could do. So I think the reason I started playing rugby was to prove to myself that it was something I could do because I'd always kind of absorbed the idea that it A, wasn't something girls could do and B, that it was something that was difficult and scary and involved a lot of injuries. So I think that it was a challenge I kind of set myself. And actually every game is the same. Every game feels like kind of an impossibility, both mentally and physically, until you're doing it. What were people's first reactions when you told them you play rugby? Um, older people, like my grandparents, were sort of vaguely horrified, I think would be the right way of putting it. Because, you know, is rugby really for girls? Uh, is it safe? That kind of thing. Even though my brother had been playing for years and no one had ever minded. Cheerleaders are usually kind of girly, so the pretty ones, um, quite a feminine sport. Uh, so the main ones that come to mind for like stereotypes that I fought as well. Or if you're a guy in cheerleading, you're gay or, you know, effeminate. Uh, which is not entirely true at all. Both sports, you get kind of caught in this really powerful stereotype. So, you know, I think of cheerleaders and I think of blonde, feminine girls. And I think people think of rugby players and they think of very, like, stereotypically masculine men. And actually, I think, I would guess it's the same with cheerleading. If you probe a little bit below the surface, there's actually a huge diversity of, you know, bodies, minds, souls, whatever you want to say. You would need to be incredibly strong, 
incredibly disciplined for both sports. And I think another link is that it's for your team, that's why you do it. So I'd like them to think more about the actual, what the actual sport entails them to do, rather than what USA TV shows everyone doing. Rugby pushes gender boundaries sometimes, and I think I can see cheerleading doing that in a similar way, like there are stereotypes of cheerleaders, there are stereotypes of rugby players. And you know, a lot of us, most of us even, don't fit into those molds in one way or another.